Baltimore. How'd that feel, huh? Dog check, dog check. Where's all my dogs at? The Rizzo Show starts now, baby. Wait. MGM Northfield Park presents The Rizzo Show. And now, your host, Tony Rizzo. I think our guys did a great job this week of just keeping their head down, continuing to work. Um, listen, at the end of the day, our guys played well today. Um, and that's the difference. Our guys played well. Hey now, how about it folks? Welcome to the Rizzo Show on a Victory Sunday. My radio partner, Aaron Goldhammer, with me. This is a Fox News takeover. Somebody call Bill Martin and tell him I'm mowing his lawn right now at the news desk, baby, because the Browns are back. And Aaron, the Browns finally got back to doing what we wanted them to do. That's run the football, and today it paid off. Bart. Since we're here, can I report a school closing, or is that not an Go option? right ahead. Right ahead. Parma, you're off tomorrow. Yeah, there you you're go. You're off. There you go. Normandy. We are Cleveland's authority in the whatever. Whatever. That is. Yeah, because we um, said so. Riza, this was the team, you know, that I think we all expected to see starting uh, with the opener against Tennessee. Um, they were creative. Their quarterback, Baker Mayfield, played well. And I think maybe we learned something, Riz, we didn't know today about the Browns, which is that Nick Chubb might be the best player on the team. They fed him, and he was awesome. Uh, Chubb with 20 carries, uh, 165 yards. He also scored three touchdowns. Listen, this game came down to physicality. The Ravens are very physical, especially at home, and the Browns matched them today. Line of scrimmage for line of scrimmage. Browns offensive line, much maligned. How'd they look today? Browns defense against Lamar Jackson. For the most part, they contained them. And this win on the road in your division is the kind of thing that we've been waiting for all offseason. Look at him go. 40, 30. They're not going to catch him. Touchdown. I feel like I'm doing Friday night touchdown again. Love look, it. I, I think Chubb there showed some incredible breakaway speed. And I thought, Riz, that that play right there was the play of the game. Uh, because Baltimore had come back. They had cut it to six. They had gotten the two-point conversion. And at that point, everybody where I was watching the game said, here we go. Same old Browns again. They're going to blow this 14-point fourth quarter lead. That flipped everything. And now all of a sudden, this team that's been discussed as this big disappointment in the first uh, month of the season, Rizzy, is tied and actually, when you break down the tiebreaker, in first place in the AFC North. Well, Nick's not a guy of words, but he did talk about his day today. I do what I can to help, help us win. And I mean, today it showed a little more just determination. Uh, I wasn't going to let anyone, you know, tackle me. I, I, I did, honestly, I had nightmares last week when I got hit on fourth and nine because he hit me, uh, one man tackled me. And that kind of drove me this week to not let one person tackle me. I got to say this, the, the kid is great. What took you so long? All right, I'm not going to nitpick. <laughs> but it took week four. Give the Browns coaches a lot of credit, too. You know what they did? They adjusted from a couple of weeks before. They realized they made a mistake at the goal line against the Rams. Today, they went to a jumbo package. We haven't seen that. I don't know where it was, somewhere in the garage. They dusted it off and brought it back. How about the day Jarvis Landry had? Although it came with a price, Landry left the game with a concussion in the third quarter. But what a day. He had a career high, 167 yards on eight catches. Look, if you're going to double Odell Beckham Jr., this is what you're going to get. Look, Odell only had two catches in the whole game, Riz, and the Browns still scored 40 points. But Odell can affect the game without actually catching a pass. That's right. Which is all of the defense is going to focus on him. And it's going to open up not just Jarvis, who I thought had a magnificent day, run after the catch, making guys miss, picking up a couple of real key first downs that I thought were important for the Browns. But also other guys. Ricky Seals-Jones, where did he come we from? We had him all along. Three catches, 82 Pick, yards, and a touchdown. Picked him up in fantasy. Doubling Odell opens up the running game. So I hope Beckham doesn't hang his head about the fact that he didn't get in the end zone and was the big part of today's win. He was, even though he didn't put up big fantasy numbers. All right, I lied. I didn't pick him up in fantasy for real. Uh, Aaron, Aaron. Baker Mayfield. <laughs> Baker Mayfield. How about Baker, my guy? All week long, he took it, fighting with Antonio Brown on Twitter. B, what are you doing? But Aaron, I thought the kid played well today. 300 yards pass. Oh, look at this. Look at the comparison of quarterbacks. 
I had to hear all week long uh, how great it was. If Lamar Jackson was better than Baker Mayfield. Can we just put the brakes on that? Who knows whether he will be or not? I don't think he will be. But let's wait and see. I thought Baker showed up big today after a week of adversity. You know, I, I thought everyone was talking all week about Baker being overrated. The whole drama, of course, with Rex Ryan and Baker's shot back at him. Um, and in the end, Riz, I thought Baker just had to step up and play his best game of the year, which is exactly what he did. He didn't try to do too much. He didn't try to push every pass deep down the field. I thought the play calling was better. Right. I thought he trusted his offensive line more. And today was the first day where I thought Baker Mayfield looked like the Baker Mayfield from last year and not like the Baker Mayfield for, well, from this year. I think the Browns got back to doing what makes him comfortable, and it made all the difference. Only the beginning, kids. Only the beginning. Look, I believed in Baker through all of this. I just believe in the kid. I think he needs the adversity. I think it's crazy. He draws all this attention from all these people. He's fighting people on Twitter. Look at what he did today. Would somebody dial him up, instant message him, and tell him he sucks for next week? He sucks, Baker. Yeah, so that he can do this again. I, I thought it. it was phenomenal. <laughs> also, don't leave out the Browns defense. I thought Freddie, right after the game, first thing he brought up was the Browns defense. Boy, did they come up big today. You know yeah. what the Ravens do? They run the football. And the Browns, okay, stop the run. That's something that the Browns had to do today. They did it. Browns won the battle of the running game today, which I thought was a key. You know, whenever you play the Ravens and the Steelers in this division, the Browns have gotten pushed around, Riz, year after year after year. Toughness and physicality was one of the main reasons they were able to win this game today. Devereaux and that started Lawrence. with the defense. So listen to this. With the pick. The Ravens had not turned the ball over once this year Ooh. until today when the Browns got them. Remember, they were missing Denzel and Greedy Williams. Their replacements in the secondary have played great. And who is this Jermaine Whitehead who looks like a Pro Bowl safety yeah. out of nowhere? Yeah. I think he's going to start even when everybody gets back healthy. Yeah, Brown's secondary today was unbelievable. We're missing three of four starters, and you shut down one of the top offenses in the league on the road in their house. Yeah. Aaron Brown's uh, head coach, Freddie Kitchens, kept on preaching not to panic this week, not to panic, and he had his team ready for the Ravens, didn't he? Got to give him some credit. Fourth, fourth week. The rookie coaches this year have not done well league-wide, but I thought it was a big step for Freddie Kitchens today. He's learning, uh, which is what he said, and that really showed. Boy, he was under as much pressure as Baker is. He was under as much pressure as anybody, and he went back to what made him comfortable. There was some creativity, I thought, in the game plan. I thought the Browns were less penalized today. I thought they seemed more together. They knew what they were doing more, and guess what? They're all in first place right now. So, what is our Merriman legal play of the day? That's right. You know what the play of the day was. The Ravens cut the Browns' lead. The Browns deep in their own territory. And uh, look at him go. Nick Chubb, he looks like Tom Merriman running after an I-Team story a couple of years ago, right? Oh, <laughs> into the end zone. 88 yard. Is it 88 or 89? It doesn't matter. It's a touchdown. And look at the Browns on the sideline. They were all fired up. That is our Merriman legal play of the day. Remember, make Merriman legal your team today. Time now for the Rizzy recap. Oh, Aaron, the offense. I'm sorry, Nick Chubb ran the ball. How about 500 yards of offense from the Cleveland In Browns Baltimore. today? Secondly, they finally found Nick Chubb. And you know, he didn't have a lot of yards in the first and second quarter. Keep banging away, banging away, and sure enough, he broke the long one. That's what he's really good at doing. And Aaron, as you said, because of tiebreakers, even though they have the same record as the Ravens, Ladies and gentlemen, the Cleveland Browns are in first place. I think for the first time 2014. this late, 2014 was the last time we were in the first, first place. place. Cleveland Browns, take that, all you haters out there. The Browns will look for another road win. Here we go again. Monday Night Football. <laughs> was that our first 1 o'clock Sunday game? Okay, the second one. Monday Night Football. The Browns are in San Francisco Monday night to take on Jimmy G and the Niners. Coming up. We're going to spin the wheel right here behind us. We're on news set, baby. Aaron, get ready. You're not allowed to know what the wheel subjects are. Mm -hmm. Tell you when we come back. Oh, it is the Rizzo Show takeover here at Fox 8 News. Welcome back, everybody, on Victory Sunday. Aaron, are you ready to spin the I wheel? I was born ready, the baby. The MGM wheel, and here we go. First up. Oh. <laughs> Suck it, Rex. Sorry, bro. Rex Ryan, Aaron, called out Baker Mayfield this week. Was quite a feat by the Browns, if you know what I mean, No Rizzi. pun intended there. But let me just say this. 
Maybe Baker needs this. Maybe we need an ESPN analyst once a week yeah, to call out right. Baker Mayfield, right? So, so the latest on this was, you know, Rex said Baker was overrated. Baker said we wear orange and brown, and there's a reason B uh, Rex isn't wearing any colors. Right. He's not coaching in the league. Right. Today, uh, Rex said this morning that Baker is lucky that Rex isn't wearing purple oh. today because, you know, he would have, I'm sure, shut Baker Mayfield down. But Baker did shut up all the haters, including Rex Ryan. 300 yards, the one touchdown, but the Browns winning is the most important. Now, he shut them up at least for a week because you know how the haters are. All right, here we go, Aaron. We have no idea what. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Baker Mayfield wanted to say something. Wait, he did? To Rex Ryan. Listen to this. Absolutely not. Rex Ryan does not get any credit for this week's win. No. <laughs> I don't know. Does he a little bit? Did he, <laughs> did he, did he poke the bear? All right, all right we'll give Chubb one, yeah. Baker two. Hey. Rex deserves a little. All right, here we go. Uh, NFL schedule. Aaron, the owners are pushing for 17 games now, not 18 games. Can I say this about the NFL? They're the number one league in the world. They're making billions of dollars, and they keep trying to screw it up. <laughs> what is wrong? Riz, you know how they have a lot of money? They want even more money. I'm against 17 games. I, I, I am too. Listen, aren't there enough injuries in the NFL? The Browns have played four games, and half their team, all their starters on defense are out. Right. We talk about the concussions and the impact of that. Football is a very physical game. Also, Riz, this is about the law of supply and demand. Every NFL Sunday is a delicious drop of juice. Wait, wait a minute. They play on Monday. They play on Thursday. They play on Sunday. In the winter, they play on Saturday. <laughs> they want one more week. Like one of more this. thing. That's All right. Great. Are you having fun? Spin it again, baby. Here we go. What are we doing with it? Justin Fields. Oh, come on. How about my Buckeyes? Who have they played? Oh, my God. What do you mean? They played a top 25 team it's on the road at night. This is Nebraska. They whooped Nebraska. The yes, wait till later this month and next month, Penn State, Wisconsin. Those are the real teams on the Buckeyes. He is, I, Nebraska was not going to beat Ohio State. He is in the conversation for the Heisman. And the Buckeyes, I believe, are one of the four best teams in the country, no doubt about it. I don't know. The rankings will come out tomorrow, and I expect them to be either two or three. Be careful. You don't want to peak in September. Okay. Let's spin it again. He's a Buckeye hater, folks. Sorry. I let him on anyway. Home sweet home. Yes, the Cavs are in style. The new and improved Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. I saw pictures of their... Um, uh, locker room. It is absolutely incredible. Folks, I want you to understand, when you go to the queue, what used to be the queue, now it's Rocket Mortgage, you're not going to recognize it. Yeah. It's that beautiful. T two things about it. I was there this past week, Riz. One is it's an art museum and also a basketball arena. Wow. The art in there is worth walking around and seeing, let alone the basketball team. The other thing is they did some things, even for fans in Loudville, to make it feel more like you're at home, to make it feel more relaxed and at ease, which is that's their whole thing, you know, at Rocket Mortgage Field House that, you, that you're going to be home. Can, field, can house, you, house, home. Can yeah, you Rocket that. Mortgage Field House me back, LeBron? <laughs> that's time soon. He's All right, not, let's spin it again. Available. Here we go. Colin Sexton. Aaron, what do you think Colin Sexton is going to do this year? You have to admit, yeah. he improved tenfold last he, he, season. He, he really did, um, but I don't think he's a future NBA star, Riz. I think he's a useful player. He's going to take offense to this. He might be like the perfect sixth man. Oh I'm interested my. to see how he grows in year two. Oh, oh Aaron, the Cavs but want I, him to I, be I a don't lot think, more. If I had to guess, I don't think Colin Sexton will ever make an all-star team. Do you? I do, and I think the Cavs expect a lot more of him than a sixth man role. I think he's one of the leaders on their team, but I agree. It's a big year for him. He's got to prove a lot, and the league's full of stars. One more? Do we have one more? One more, baby. McDonald's PLT. Stands for plant, lettuce, and tomato. Now listen, Burger King started it. I actually tried the Impossible Whopper, and you know what? It wasn't all that bad. Now McDonald, that is a burger, but that is not meat. Would you eat that? No, I'm not a vegetarian. I'm probably allergic to something that's in it. That's and if I want a true. Big Mac, right. I'm just going to get a Big Mac. No, no, I want plants to taste like burger. It's the new thing. What, why, why do you want plants to taste like burger? Because it's much better for you, you if know you what eat I like? you know what less I like? red meat. Burgers that taste like burgers are good, too. Yeah, I know. Give me a brisket for 14 hours in a smoker any day. Coming up, oh, our Indian season in the books. What is next? We'll talk about the tribe's future. Disappointing ending to a fantastic year. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Rizzo Show. We will wrap up the Indian season right here and now. Aaron, Indians won 93 games and didn't go 
to the playoffs. How would you grade the season? Like a C minus or a D plus. What? Because a lot of those wins came against the Tigers and the Royals, and frankly, those weren't Major League Baseball teams. And the Indians are in a win window right now. Um, they had a lot of adversity to contend with, and I thought Terry Francona did a really good job of holding them together. Mm. But here we were again, Riz, in the last week of the season, with the season on the line, and the Tribe completely fell on their face when they were tied for the wild card, and I expected them to be playing a game tomorrow or yeah. this week the against teams that weren't trying and weren't good. Well, they just faltered. Well, the end of the season was was very puzzling. What was the top five hitters were like one for, for 40? 50, one for 50. In, in like right. four or five yeah. games. That was incredible. But yeah. Aaron, you can't. The injuries this team, let's take a look. I mean, I, the injuries are unbelievable. Jose Ramirez, Kluber, Kip. Naquin Salazar. Salazar. Uh, don't you're, you're don't, counting don't, on wait, Salazar? Wait a minute. Don't forget this. Lindor was out yeah. for a month. I know. Um, uh, uh, Carrasco uh, had uh, cancer, for God's sakes. And those are, you take seven or eight guys off any team in the league, yeah. and they'd be doing with the end. The fact that they won 93 games, Terry Francona, wow. I hope you never leave Cleveland. Honestly, I love him that much. I, 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 Tito did a great job, and I, and I understand the injuries were a major factor, but Riz, this was a year where we thought for sure that they were going to be in the playoffs, and mm. they only have How Frankie for a short window. Yeah. And again, when you looked at this with a week to go and the teams that they were playing, as the Rays were going into playing the Yankees and you were going into playing the White Sox, you really liked your chances. One of the things about them that has bothered me the last couple years in the postseason, when they played the Astros, when they had the two nothing lead against the Yankees, oh, don't bring when the this pressure up. has been Why ramped are you up. Victory Sunday, right? They now. just You're haven't played it. well. Well, you were the one who asked You're the, me the dream crusher. questions. Listen, I got silver lining right here. You know what you found this year? You found two stars this year. Number one, Oscar Mercado. Man, we wondered why they didn't bring him up. Now we really wonder. I thought this kid over delivered the entire season. 15 homers, 54 RBIs. He only played half the year. Speaking of young stars, what about Shane? Don't call me Justin Bieber. I mean, where did the Indies? Who is scouting Indians young pitchers? They need a raise right now. I say give them a raise. Dolan's, Aaron, those two guys are going to be a big part of the Indians' future, yeah. uh, along with Fran Mill. So I think the Indians' future is bright, and I think next year they're coming back loaded. Do, do you think they've got a window that's still open to win a championship for the first time in 70 years, like the next five years? I don't know they about could, five. Because, listen, the White Sox are coming on. You know, they, we struggled against them 8-11 and 11 against the White us. Sox this year. They completely yeah. owned us. And the Twins aren't going anywhere either. Do you see them going into next year with Frankie again as, as contenders again? Watch what happens to the Twins in the postseason. Yeah, I do. I think the Indians are contenders. I don't know how long we're going to have Frankie. A year, maybe two, year and a half, we'll find out. But I know this. In 2020, the Indians can win the World Series because they have pitching. Ah, what about their top pitcher? Will the Indians trade Corey Kluber? Will they bring him back for another year? I'm hearing he wants to come back. And Aaron, I don't know if you're a major league club right now. You could say no to a guy like Kluber. I understand this year was a wash for him. I understand he had a lot of innings on him in the postseason in the past couple of years. But I'll take a chance on him next year. You want him back? You're going to go crazy on me on this. Corey Kluber only makes, which for a baseball pitcher and ace, Seventeen and a half million dollars next year. It's actually a bargain. Eighteen million the following year. Right. But would I trade Kluber? The answer is always in these questions. For what? You know, I, I can't say definitively yes that I would do a deal. But as if they get the kind of deal that they got for Trevor Bauer, where you get young, controllable position players that can mash home runs and can help you on defense and can play every day with the pitching they already have with Clevenger, mm. with Bieber, with Savali, with Carrasco coming back. Hopefully I next year Kluber. he'll have a healthy year. I want Kluber. You do? I do. Wait, is right. it, it, isn't it depends on what you get? Mm, I would rather have Kluber. Folks, a great place to catch a game is our favorite place, the MGM Northfield Park. Let's see what's happening. This September, visit MGM Northfield Park for our $5 million Swipe to Win free play every day. Swipe your card from 9 to 11 and receive up to $1,000 in free play. Plus, receive an entry to win a Mercedes Saturdays at 8 p.m. Football season is here and Tap Sports Bar has all the games featuring over 75 TVs. Join us for watch parties every Saturday and Sunday for chances to win awesome prizes and enjoy food and beverage specials. Lewis Black brings the laughs in the Jokes on Us Tour to center stage Saturday, October 5th. Tickets available at the MGM box office or Ticketmaster.com. Take a Vegas vacation without leaving the state. MGM Northfield Park. Las Vegas is here.
Don't forget, stay tuned for our good friends, Big Chuck and <laughs> Little John, who are coming up next. Next up for Baker and the boys, Jimmy Garoppolo and the Niners. Here in the Niners, are undefeated, and they had a bye this week, so they have two weeks to prepare for a Monday night game. They actually have 15 days to prepare for the Browns. Thanks a lot, schedule makers. Say hi to your family. They're in town. Hi, family. Thanks for coming to town. I've been meaning to do this the whole show. I wanted what is, to. What's your tie's wrong just my... a little crooked. I should have. That, you I, know who's handsome? That I Jimmy should've. Garoppolo is a good looking man. Yeah. Uh, we're back again next week. Until then, hey, see you on Victory Monday. ESPN Cleveland tomorrow morning. Shana Tova, everybody. Good.